Welcome. I'm Mal Waldrop. We're here at the cable TV office, and this is a special show called Around Before the Crown. And we got several great former football players here from the University of Alabama, and one, we got two from the University of Alabama, not several, and we got one from Clemson. And I wanted to introduce them. This is Billy Jackson, who played under Bear Bryant in the late 70s and early 80s, I think. Late 70s. Late 70s. And mm -hmm. Joe Waldrop, who played under Frank Howard, um, what years? 62 to 66. 62 to 66. <clears throat> and then you have everybody knows Mayor Eddie Lowe, played for Bear Bryant in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to come on here today and talk about some of their old stories and, and uh, go back and talk about their coaches and, and uh, what, what, how the game was then and how it is now. And uh, hopefully this will be entertaining. So uh, why don't we start out with Eddie down here and, and uh, let's, why don't, tell us about, tell us just one of your fondest memories of playing under Coach Bear Bryant. Uh I can tell you this, that it was really a blessing to be able to play at the University of Alabama to play for Coach Bryant. You didn't realize that at that time, but you you appreciate it once you got on your own because, you know, Coach Bryant got everything out of you uh, to the maximum, but he, he, he was equipping you uh, for life, and now I'm truly grateful for that. But, uh, you know, he was always prepared, and he, like I said, you, you practice so much so hard that the game was, uh, you looked forward to the game because the game was a piece of cake the way you practiced during the week. But I can tell you, uh, the, I think the greatest thing that I learned from Coach Bryan, and you know, I used to hear my parents kind of talk about it, you really didn't understand it. But I think the greatest thing that I learned from Coach Bryan was how not to be jealous. It's, it's all about the team and you you put the team first, and, 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 and I even try to do that today. And, and I think that's one of the greatest things that I learned from him is you always put the team, and you know, throughout life we're on teams. And, and so I learned that from him, and I still try to apply it every day now. That's great. Uh, Billy, you mentioned earlier about y'all playing together and practicing together. Any great memories you have there <laughs> from practicing under Coach Bryant and y'all two playing against each other from the home, home field? <clears throat> Well, just like Eddie said, you know, we practice hard, I mean, every day. Now they have it where they only can be on, on the field 20 hours a day. I mean, 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. But back then, in two days, we, we probably would spend 20 hours. You know, we had no time, you know. It, it, we practiced as long as Coach Bryant felt like we needed to practice at that time. But uh, some of my fondest memories is being able to play with guys that I grew up with. Eddie and I grew up together. <coughs> Uh, believe it or not, uh, I don't know why, but I think he shortened my career in the pros <laughs> because in practice, all he, only person he wanted to go against was me. And uh, I think it got to a point where all the other well, guys Well, Billy didn't fake you either. Him. See, it was easy to hit him. Yeah, he didn't yeah. fake you. So he was a downhill so runner. He, yeah, he was a downhill runner. You know, he, he said they didn't count him. I'm number four. He'd move everybody else back, and he'd come to number four. So it got to a point where all the guys knew that. The running back, they didn't want to get, go against Eddie anyway because Eddie was one of the strongest guys on the team. This guy benched over 465 pounds at that time. And, uh, you know, he had that low center of gravity, and you couldn't get up under him. And we would be practicing, and Coach Bryant would be right over the tower. And, you know, we had to both go hard because, you know, you, you, you want to look good. And, I mean, every day, I mean, I, I you know, I, I think I got by two concussions because of him, you know. But, <laughs> well, uh, he wasn't fake, you, man. He yeah, was, you yeah. knew that, so, you know, it was but, just uh, Billy Goat football. <laughs> just take it. But, uh, take it you know, we, we had a, I think we had a great time there. And uh, we won. I mean, only we only lost four games in my entire career at uh, Alabama. We won two national championships. We had three SEC titles, and uh, mm -hmm. like I said, we uh, we had a great team. And that that fraternity that we that we built during that time is it, it, one that is lasting. You know, right. and uh, there's very few people that can go to school and play college football with with one of their best friends. So I think that was one of the fondest memories that we had. And this guy over here, he can eat. I mean, he, you know, they would say all the time, the Phoenix City guys. At that time, we had uh, myself, Jeremiah, and Eddie. You know, we was all there at the same mm -hmm. time. And, uh, 
you know, we had a, a real good time. We, we were very simple guys. We didn't do a whole mm. lot. Eat, play football, and go to class. You know, right, and, and, exactly. Uh, that, that was our, our whole thing during that time. So, you know, to be able to be around guys who had like interests, you know, was very good for us. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Joe, what, what comes to mind when you think about? Well, well I, I, I grew up in Lynette, and uh, Clemson recruited me. A fellow named Mac Tonin had connections at Clemson and uh, sent Goat McMillan down here with a freshman coach to recruit me and act like they wanted me, so I wound up going to Clemson. And uh, <clears throat> football is football wherever you play it. I mean, it's blocking and it's tackling exactly. and it's running into each other. And back in those days, <clears throat> it's, I think it's a softer game now. People may not realize that, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's a softer game nowadays because they have rules about not hitting with your helmet. You know, we used to we used to tackle with our face and our forehead. That's the way bow we hit neck. people. Bow your neck and hit them, man. And that was so much fun. Wasn't Thrilling, it? Uh, yeah. I mean, he may not like it. I didn't want to hit you. I wouldn't want to hit you. <laughs> but he, he may not have liked it. He but may not have liked it. But I mean, you know, I, I can very well remember playing North Carolina and they had a guy at fullback named Eddie Kessler. And they had a guy at tailback named Ken Willard. Y'all may remember him. He played with the 49ers later. And I'm a left linebacker on Oklahoma defense right on that guard. And we played kind of up in there, you know. And when that guard went inside, here come Kessler. Boom, hit me, and I hit him. And here comes Willard. Boom, hit me, and I hit him. That's just the way it was. And we, yeah. we hit folks straight up. I mean, and it's a, it's a different – games played a little different now. And, but, but I tell you, the fond memory I have uh, at Clemson, and I always say this because it's true, Coach Howard, you know, played at Alabama. Uh, he was right. He was ahead of Bryant, and uh, then he went to Clemson, took an assistant coach's job, and then became head coach, where he flourished for 30 years and was a, a good, successful coach. He believed in blocking and tackling, and he believed in basic football. He said about blocking and tackling and defense wins games, and you got to do that. <clears throat> but out of all the things I remember about him, and it's different from Coach Bryant, was Coach Howard taught us that they, you can find humor in just about everything. No matter how bad things get, you got to laugh at have yourself. Have fun. you got to laugh at yourself and have fun. That's mm -hmm. right. So I do remember that about him, and that's made an impression on me. So he told me one time, he said, Walter, he said, you remind me of a water faucet. I said, what you talking about, Coach? He said, you run too long in the same place. <laughs> <laughs> But let, let me say, he did say something, and we were talking earlier. Uh, the game has changed tremendously, in the, and I'm, it probably changed from his time to Bill in my era, and it's, it has changed, in my opinion, from the era that when Bill and I played. It's, uh, uh, I think it's not as physical as it was uh, when we played. Uh, like uh, Mr. Joe said, you have to really – you had to take on things thick, as a phrase they use as a linebacker. And yeah. I just think that probably we could probably be better in now game now because we had a physical mentality, <clears throat> and that's where the game is going to be won. And I and I say this, uh, I know a lot of people probably don't agree with this, but from my perspective as a linebacker, I think that uh, it makes a linebacker soft when you're playing against the spread all the time because mm -hmm. of the zone blocking and. And having to run and having to run, run sideways catch instead of running down here, yeah, yeah. uh, and, and I think the physicality of it is really what makes a team. And I don't think that will ever change. I, mm, I no. just think if you can teach and strive and teach guys to always play physical, I mean, really playing as physical as the rules allow you to, I think most of the time those teams win. Well, you look at some time. old <laughs> you look at some old film, and you see linemen back in those days firing off the ball and knocking folks off the ball yeah. if they wanted to block somebody. Now, when the ball is snapped, all the offensive linemen stand up. They look like they're going to play patty cake, but they stand up and they block with the hands, and that's just the technique that they use now because of a lot of throwing and a lot of shield blocking and all zone that blocking. stuff, zone blocking right. and all that. It's just different that way, and. Uh, but it was, I agree with you, it was much more physical contact uh, in our day. Now, it, it, I'll tell you one thing, it, it, this game today is faster. Yeah. I think it's faster 
than the game. Well, that's the design. We had when I played. I mean, they, yeah, yeah and, and I can I can't speak from an offensive standpoint, but and Billy can answer this and tell you. A linebacker, uh, uh, a fullback, had to have the same mentality as a linebacker. Oh, because, sure. Oh, sure. I mean, you got to. I mean, you got to hit the head head on, and I think. In today's environment, you can play long and last long. Yeah, mm -hmm. I bet Derrick Henry's highest moment in, is when he runs over somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, Billy, I, is that true? Well, or I stiff think, arm somebody? Or like stiff arm lineman. somebody knocks them down. I would have loved to have played in the style of offense that they're playing now because it's softer. I mean, you know, I was telling a guy the other day, Derrick Henry ran the ball in two and a half game more than I did in an entire season. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the because Coach Bryant played nine, ten running back every game. I mean, he was going to do that whether you were exactly. winning or losing. Exactly. And uh, now, you know, if a guy get in the game and you know, you know, uh, Saban, he was going to win or lose with 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 Henry mm -hmm. in a couple of games. Uh, you know, forty six times. Man, if I could have ran the ball forty six <laughs> times in one game, yeah. I, I would have had two hundred and fifty, three hundred yards. You know. Uh, because we had a very good offensive line at that mm -hmm. time. And mm -hmm. the guys wasn't as big as they are now because our offensive line back then only averaged about 255 pounds. Who? Adelette was the biggest one? Buddy Adelette was, was the, the biggest the, one. Was probably it? was the biggest one we had. Yeah, he was six, 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 weighed about 260 mm -hmm. pounds, you know. And that's small, you know, in this day and time. Now, you know, Major Carlin's don't even look at a guy. If he's not 300 pounds. He's not six four, six five, 300 pounds. He's the 255 pounders are linebackers yeah. now. Absolutely, right? exactly. Oh yeah. oh yeah. But uh, the game has changed so much. But like I said, it's softer. Uh, I think I would have lasted a lot longer in a game like this, playing fullback. I played fullback and halfback in Alabama. A fullback at that time, you was a linebacker <clears throat> that knew how to catch the football. Right. <laughs> or a guard that knew oh, how to block. Or knew how to block. And you had to, sometimes you had to feel. Because if yeah. the guy's slanting and the other guy come there, you got to feel that, feel that gap. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> being a fullback, and then we ran out of the wishbone. Mm -hmm. So we was tight. And, you know, I, every play you was going to get hit as a right. fullback. You know, either you had the ball or you were going to be blocking somebody. Or somebody mm -hmm. going to be hitting you thinking you right. had the ball. But uh, like I said, the game has really changed, and uh, I would have loved to have been able to play in this era because, you know, <clears throat> it's so wide open. You know, right. once you hit a crease, and if you're going downhill, you know, you got five, six yards even before you get hit. Right. So that's that's very good. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. speaking about Derrick Henry, I, they recruited him as an athlete, even though he held the Russian record in Florida mm -hmm. for, you know, yeah. high school or really, I think the okay. nation maybe. In yeah, four but, years now. Yeah, and but, uh, I'm glad that they brought him in as a running back. <laughs> and he's two, <laughs> almost 250, well, oh, 240. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah 240. he's 246, mm -hmm. four, 240. Oh, yeah. And they got another oh, one yeah. behind him, Bo Scarborough. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway. Well, the game, the game uh, itself, uh, you know, Billy was talking and, and we were talking, Mr. Joe, you know, when we were playing, you know, Coach Bryant would play three quarterbacks in a game, and, mm -hmm. and you never, you never knew when you were going to be called upon. But when you dressed out, you better be prepared. He did not, he did not expect anything to fall on. And then to, to show you how much it has changed mm -hmm. in today's environment, if you play two quarterbacks, you got a controversy, right. and you really have a controversy if one is black and one is white. And when you hear all that, you look at it. Are these people crazy? They're trying to win the game. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It ain't got anything to do it, with no, it, man. Coach, win I, the Coach game. Bryant's not standing over there and say, "When well, I'm gonna play a black now, am I gonna play a white?" No, no he's gonna, gonna try to game. win the game, man. <laughs> he's gonna put the one in there. And you know, when you have two quarterbacks rotating, it's a controversy now. Yeah. What, I mean, to me, that's that's ludicrous. Right. You're trying to win the game. You're trying to wear other teams out. So that was standards, but it goes to show you how things evolved and yeah. how things changed. But right. I, I think I can say this: all of us are probably old school. Uh, I think the more physicality that you have, the more players that you play and rotate, and that was Coach Bryan's theory that he would beat you in the fourth quarter because right. he wanted to wear you down. Right, that's right. And nowadays they don't they, they don't look at it that I way. I'll mm -hmm. tell you a funny story about Coach Howard. I got lots of Coach Howard stories. Most of them I can't tell with this well, camera running, but he uh, <laughs> but uh, this particular 
time he was running out of quarterbacks over there on the sidelines. One got hurt, one was sick, and the other one uh, fainted or something, and he was close in the game, and he turned to his uh, next best athlete uh, who never played quarterback. Mm -hmm. And he turns to him, and you got to get somebody in there to take snaps, hand the ball off. And he turns to him, and he says, boy, he says, do you believe in magic? <laughs> And he looked at him and he says, sir, he said, I said, do you believe in magic? And he said, well, yeah, I guess so. He said, well, poof, you're now a quarterback. So you did it. <laughs> and and you did what they told you. That's absolutely. He went around on the field, took the ball, made handoffs. So that's the way it was. Billy, what's your favorite one of Coach Brown? I got one I'm going to say when mm -hmm. and you were gone. But what's you remember any things that Coach Brown did? Well, I, you know, talking about myself, I can remember we were playing it in a game. I think you was there. Doing Probably that a sophomore. Uh, we're playing against the University of Tennessee and uh, they had a uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was there. A nose guard. <laughs> I and remember. His last name was Nuna. <laughs> and uh, I mean this guy, he had that low center of gravity and I mean he was he was just killing that our center during that time. And the guy hit me and he and I was a little dizzy and I was coming off the field. And uh, the first person I saw was Coach Bryant. And you know, I, you're know, thinking I'm gonna get out a couple plays, and he looked at me and said, "Jack, are you all right?" It looked like all pain just went away. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, oh, I went so back you, in the game. You were healed. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah you got that. Yeah, you know. yeah. And another one I, I remember playing against Notre Dame my senior year. Um, I had strained my hamstring in practice that Thursday. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't tell anybody, you know, and Eddie know I slept in these sleeves because my, my hand was so bad during that time. And I didn't tell anybody. So I worked on it that, <clears throat> that Thursday night and I worked on it all, all uh, Friday. We got in the game and we were playing and the first quarter I did fairly well. And then I, next quarter we came out in the second quarter and I screened it again. So I told Coach Gustra, I, told, I said, I, I want to go, but I can't go. So he went over there and told Coach Bryant. And I was walking, you know, trying to loosen it up. And uh, Coach Bryant looked back at me and said, where's Jackson at? And Coach Gustra said, well, Jackson can't go. Coach Bryant looked back at me and said, and I can't say what he said. <laughs> but he said, I'm going to tell you, hell, he walking. You know? <laughs> but, um, I mean, he, you know, he. I, yeah, he just didn't take. Yeah, he, he just didn't take. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let, let me go back when we, I remember we playing Tennessee up there in Tennessee. At the, and yeah. uh, this defensive nose guard, they call him nose guard back then. He's uh, had a low center of gravity. Uh, and his name was Noonan. And I've never seen a person get hit. And he kind of broke your face, man. But the strangest thing, when he took his helmet off, he had a knot where the, where the helmet came down. <laughs> I, had never, I had never seen that in my life. He hit Billy so hard when he took his helmet off, he had a knot up there, but the helmet fit right here. But the knot was up, there, up under the helmet. <laughs> They, you know, they could me for the longest about that. Oh, we Lord. call it noon and not. Noon and not. Oh, my Lord. But I remember, let me tell you, and Billy, you were gone. We were playing uh, uh, Rutgers up in the Meadowlands. I was a junior. Jeremiah and I was juniors. And it was about the fifth or sixth game of the year, and we were ranked one or two. I can't remember specifically. But anyway, we found out that Rutgers had been practicing for us Every week, they, whoever they played, they would practice for those teams and get that out of the way, but they would practice for Alabama because even today when everybody beat Alabama, that makes their season. Yeah, make their season. And they were, they were landing on us, Mrs. Joe, mm. at, at halftime. Mm. I mean, they were, it, it showed, and we were behind. So we go in the locker room, and Billy could tell you, Coach Brown always had that rolled up uh, schedule or whatever it was in his hand. And, you know, he could use it too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you can take your helmet off. <laughs> and he sat down and uh, seemed like he turned it, but he jumped up and started hitting his hand, hitting, the, hitting his hand with what he had in his hand and said, seniors, I have one thing to say. If we lose this game, you'll never work in the state of Alabama. <laughs> I leaned over to Jeremiah because it was looking damn. I looked over to Jeremiah and whispered, some player, we juniors. But anyway, to make a long story short, 
we went out and killed him. <laughs> and he could, he, could, he could motivate you through fear. That's right. Now, whether he meant that or not, I don't know, but he probably it worked. could have done it. It, it worked. worked. It worked. <laughs> I never seen a guy, he knew what to say, when to say it, and how to say exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. We were playing against uh, Ole Miss. I can remember <clears> this game, and I mean, offensively, Every time we got the ball in the first half, we scored. And the score was like 35 to uh, 18 going in the half. But the defense wasn't doing this well. Mm. And Coach Bryant came into the locker room at halftime. And he just all of a sudden just started calling out defensive players' names. He said, E.J. Jr., that all-American linebacker I got, is he playing today? <laughs> Everybody went to look He called out every starter on that on, on that defensive line. Mm -hmm. We went out there the second half, and uh, Ole Miss didn't get across the fifty yard line. <laughs> we ended up beating them like like fifty nine to like twenty something. But I mean, he he knew what to say and when to say it, and we we yeah. kidded those guys about that for a long yeah. time. Well, man. you know, coaches, and I'm yeah. quite sure how would probably. <clears throat> Yeah, Probably man. motivated through fear. Oh, yeah. Well, he did. Yeah. He did a lot of that. And uh, he'd tell us about how bad things are going to be next week. We didn't wake up, start playing. You know, we're going to have some rough practices and all that. We got a little worried about that. And uh, <clears throat> But Coach Howard, <clears throat> Coach Howard was a good – good had a good sense of what was going on now he he would tell us before the game in the locker room and I if if he were there tonight at that game he'd probably look at those boys and he'd say now all you boys y'all have this is number 15 we've gone through this whole thing all year and all I hear is that Alabama's better than you are that Alabama's gonna beat you gonna beat you Going to beat you and going to beat you. Y'all don't deserve to be here. So we might as well pack up our stuff and go home <laughs> and get out of here right now. But, you know, we're going to go out and we're going to show them who we are. Y'all going to wake them up and prove that, you're, that you can do it. And that's they're going to go charging out the, out the door, you know, screaming and hollering. That's the way that's going to work. Now, that may not, that Dabo may not do that. I don't know, but that's probably what Coach Well, Howard I would is. imagine he is. And yeah, he's going to do something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they have ways way of motivating. They have ways of motivating them, and some of them uh, is through fear. It's through fear, and it also challenges your yeah. upbringing, and it challenges challenges who you are, you know. And you just don't want to be talked down to, and don't want to be made to think you can't do it. Go out there and show them you can do it. Oh yeah, and that's absolutely. a big. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. Well, it should be a good game, but I just think the team that's going to play the more physical. The physicality yeah. of it in, in Alabama, well, in the the style that they play in, they yeah. they play more physical. Yeah, games, I've, I've, in my opinion, than Clemson. Not uh, saying Clemson yeah. can't play physical, right. but just how Alabama offense plays and not running the spread and the yeah. defense having right. to go against them right. in practice. Right. Uh, I think they've played more physical games. Then. Right. We, that's right. We got, to, we got to have some speed on the edges. We got to attack Alabama on the mm -hmm. edge, I think. And we got, we got to get some seams downfield and complete a few passes for us to get down there to score. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it may work. But we're not going to – I don't see us running the ball right up Alabama's gut. What about the quarterback? How many? Well, I hope he doesn't run the ball like you said a while ago <laughs> as many times as – but he ran the ball, I think, 27 times in the last game against Oklahoma, and that's a lot. And that's Mal, a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. A lot. And I was just saying this, Mal, and, and to, to, before we started, is that if I was a Alabama coach, uh, not you don't teach guys to play dirty, but what I would tell my defense, especially <laughs> those big boys, every time because the quarterback is their their team, mm -hmm. every time you hit him, lay on them a little longer than what you normally do. <laughs> and that just did not play lay dirty. down on it. Just him. lay on them a few seconds long. That's right. That's make a the great fish strategy. Just and, roll on, make and, fish, and come get you. Run, up. Exactly, and that'll eventually start, mm -hmm. you know, taking yeah. something out of him. Some of those boys will mash your breath out of him. <laughs> 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 he's not, not, not saying play dirty. Now. No, I understand. But you just take a little rest. That's not against the rule. No, just lay on them a little longer, a little longer, a few seconds longer. That's right. And then eventually it'll start. You know, taking that out of him. Yeah, I, that's, if, that's one of those defensive tactics that you use in the pros. You know, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. And I got to believe that Nick Saban and Coach Smart have thought about it and oh, probably yeah. told them that. Yeah. 
Just That's lay on them a little on. longer, a few seconds longer <laughs> each time, because if they run them 20-something time. I'm How do you think, uh, I was thinking about this today coming over here. How do you think Coach Smart going to Georgia, and I think I know what the answer is already, is going to impact the relationship he has with his defensive players for this game? Well, I, from my perspective, I, I, I think when you hear those guys talk and you hear Coach Saban talk, the thing that they talked about more than I've heard in a long time, and Coach Brian used to always talk, you know, you're a team. You have yeah. to – it's not about you, but it's right. about the team. And I think with Smart being there, which he recruited a lot of those guys, mm. I think he's teaching them that you, you, you work through – and you do what you say you're going to do, and it seems to me that he's handled it uh, yeah. pretty good. But I think that may be something also that may motivate the defensive player, which I'm hoping right. to, you know, yeah. to do it for him. Yeah. So I'm not sure if that's not part of the strategy. And probably yeah. Coach Saban probably asked him to stay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know, but I could see that as a strategy that uh, mm -hmm. you know to motivate his players because that's also he's yeah. following through with it what he committed to do. That's right. He stayed mm -hmm. on the job. And, you know, with the team. And so uh, and I think. That's a big part of his process is just finishing the commitment. You know, and, yeah, and I think it would help him in recruiting, too. Right. Uh, it will but, help him. Yeah, that's will. what I, I think it would help him in his recruiting yeah. uh, by him showing the commitment there. I believe you're right. Yeah. Well, I really My enjoyed uh, sitting here doing this, you guys. And well, then, will you? One, one last Maybe we ought to get around the coffee table every now and then on the, somewhere <laughs> yeah. around town and shoot the bull. We can tell some stories we can't tell. We, yeah, we, we can't can mention we, it on, on TV. <laughs> That's right. We, we need to go ahead and wrap it up. But what's your what's your final prediction on on tonight? Well, of course, you know I'm hoping Alabama win. And as, if you ask the players, whether you win by one point or thirty points, you win. But I, I just feel that uh, I think that. I, I'm hoping, at least, and I think Alabama will win by by double digits. Mm -hmm. That just, you know, from I just think from ten up, I think they got a chance to win by double digits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if they play physical like they've been playing. All right. What's your What's your final? What's the score? The score. Uh, I would say about <laughs> twenty four <laughs> to. 14 or 13 or something like that. All right. How about you? Well, I, uh, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, it's, hard, it's hard for me to call it. Of course, I'm prejudiced, as you know. He's not. He's just being objective now about everything. But, no, uh, i say this. We've got a chance to win the ball game because we've got talent on the field. Alabama's got talent. And I, I agree with a lot of what he said. But at the end of the day, if the game is close down at the end, we got a chance to win that game because we got some talent that can get it in the end zone one way or the other. I say if the game's close down at the end, my score is 34 to 31, Clemson. All right. <laughs> 34 31. There you go. Big scoring <clears throat> game. All right, well, well you? I, you know, I, I've looked at the entire season of Alabama, and I think the whole mindset of the team changed this year. You know, last two years, they been there but they didn't get it they didn't finish uh <clears throat> i think coach saban changed his mindset in that i don't think these guys went home for christmas like they've been doing i told people when i was at alabama we never went home for christmas mm -hmm. you know? thanksgiving so, christmas. <clears throat> and i thought right. New Year's you saw the play when they played right. against michigan right. you know i think the team was a lot fresher and you know they they, they just totally dominated that game mm -hmm. i think in this game uh, tonight uh, Alabama will win. I think it's going to be won by a fairly large margin. I think my prediction would be 27 to 7, uh, Alabama. <clears throat> And, and, you know, we all pro tie. Alabama and you're pro Clemson. There you go. <laughs> that's absolutely right. But, you know, Clemson has a lot of team speed, you know, and yeah, I think it's going to be a real good yeah. game, but yeah. I think Alabama is a lot more physical. Alabama's got a lot of firepower. Yeah. They got yeah. Ridley down here. Clemson is more Stewart. finesse, you know, yeah. Than, yeah. Than, than Alabama. But that's right. if they can get on the corners, they, it's going to be a long night for Alabama. But I think if we can maintain that quarterback, keep him inside, yeah. I think we're going to. <clears throat> We're gonna be do do pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, thank all y'all for being here. Uh, thank you for looking, you for, for watching. Thank you for the opportunity. We'll yeah. see you tonight. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed it. <laughs>